in in those days, you were still in pretty much of a learning mode yourself, oh, and, and pioneering yeah. mode. Yeah. And and did you? Uh, I think you told me earlier that you had traveled. You had gone over to England and and attended conferences there. Yeah, and you yeah. and, and met Wishart over there. Yeah. And who who are some of the people who you encountered over there? You must have run into. Uh, R. A. Fisher and, and oh, I didn't meet you know. Fisher until where I was at Princeton. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. Yeah, and uh, he came to Princeton. Um, uh, Joan Fisher, his daughter, George. And this and a lot of these stories go on and on. The um, we needed a secretary, and secretaries are in short supply. And George Barnard said to George Box at one day, uh, Joan Fisher, Sir Ronald's daughter, was looking for looking for a secretarial job. Maybe we maybe she could maybe she could come to the States and be secretary. So that's what happened. We had Joan Fisher as a secretary at the STRG. And um, and so Joan's in Princeton and now Sir Ronald comes to Princeton, has more than one excuse to come to Princeton. He was there to give seminars on occasion, and so mm -hmm. I got to meet Sir Ronald Fisher as a oh. consequence of that association in Princeton, right? There's an interesting story about uh, Fisher at Princeton I, you might, I find interesting. We were invited to dinner, and um, so George and his wife and uh, Joan and uh, Tady and I, and uh, it seemed to me the Anscombs were there, but I'm not... But, so we're having this dinner in the Princeton Inn, and it's quite late. We got to starting late, and we had a late dinner, and we had a big dinner, and so forth. And there's Sir Ronald Fisher. And we finally get him around to talking about when he was knighted. Oh. I say, oh, this is interesting, you know. <laughs> and uh, he starts describing all the protocol and so forth. And this is literally true. We have Sir Ronald Fisher standing at the portal of the door. They open the door and they, they announce him and he's supposed to approach the queen and be knighted, right? That's where we are at that point, right? At this point in time, we were the only people in the order, in the restaurant and this guy comes up with a vacuum cleaner <laughs> and starts vacuuming around the table. <laughs> and that cut in the conversation and we never did hear the rest of that oh story. Oh my. I've never, that always burns me up. And then, then, so we never did hear what it was like to approach the queen and all the rest of the, uh -huh. the real fun part of the uh, procedures. Eh? But anyway, that's a long time ago. Goodness, that's a long time ago. Now, he was he was knighted for his his work in field plot technique and oh, for... Just, oh, the geneticist. As a geneticist? Oh, I think oh. much more, more than a geneticist and statistician. Oh, yeah, I think so. I yeah. see. Oh. oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, statistics was sort of, he had to get it straightened out to do his genetics. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, he did that, uh, he didn't did he? That, yeah. He did that, yeah. You had a story about his smoking behavior. Oh, well, that's, a, no, that's much, much later. Now I'm at, now we're up many more years in the dance, and we're now at Wisconsin. And um, George is remarried, and... Um, and he, he married uh, he married Joan uh -huh. Joan Fisher, and uh, so and Sir Ronald comes to Madison, Wisconsin, and uh, he's giving a seminar in the economics department or something like that, and and George says, "Stu, I can't be there." He says, "Do I want to say this?" No, I mean, he will take take him out at the end of the semester. Take him out, take him across university place and and uh, get him a you know take him get him a beer and so forth and, and you know and, and and bring him back to the house later in the afternoon so fine and so here i you know i have ra fisher all to myself wow i was petrified <clears throat> young private <laughs> audience <laughs> oh jeez what am i going to talk about with this great at any rate you'd think i'd be full of questions i was just i really was any rate and get him down he's you know he's and sit him down in the, in the, get him across the street to this beer hall and sit him in a booth and uh, be ordering the beer and he, uh, he lights up his pipe. But when he lights up his pipe, he makes a, he had paper matches and he, and he unfolds the paper matches. So all the, all the matches are loose up there like that, right? And then he strikes the match and he sits there 
puffing on his pipe, puff, puff, and, and a coal jumps out of the, of the pipe into the matches, <gasps> and the matches explode. Oh, my. But what's interesting about it is he, they explode, but he can't get rid of it. And what he had done, he had apparently put the flap of the match cover between his fingers. Ouch. So there this man is waving his hand like this with this furious flame going on. And he finally gets rid of it and so on. Yeah. And, and he opens it and he says, it does hurt a bit. And, oh, jeez. Oh, golly. And I'm in charge of survival. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> so it was really pretty tough. I, I, called, I called Joan and told her. What I was, and, uh, and I did, so the last time I saw Sir Ronald Fisher was I dropped him off at the emergency room oh. at the Princeton University <laughs> Hospital. <laughs> That was a terrible experience, though. You know. If you'd only thought you could have put his hand in the beer. You know, well, yeah. I, we weren't thinking. We were just overreacting. Uh. It was really, really, he says, yes, it does hurt a bit, and it just looked awful. <laughs> Masters <Yeah>. of the <laughs> understatement. 